So we both agree that going to closings is an absolute unequivocal waste of time. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. I made a statement, like a declarative statement that I believe that it's a waste of time for various different reasons. What an enormous fucking waste of time. Going to closings. It's not a very productive kind of environment if you've been to one before, if you're listening. You talk about the weather. I don't even know why you're there. Truthfully, the only reason you're there more often than not is just to pick up the money. I mean, that's really what's true. And the title company does their job or the attorney does their job. And yet what was so interesting is I got so much pushback. The industry hasn't been reinvented in over, I mean, 50 years prior to EXP. They were kind of the trailblazer of the next generation. A lot of these agents are still playing catch up with the mentality. You were sharing with me off camera before we got started that um, you grew up in a household with someone who was a very successful entrepreneur. You know, your father, he built a very big company. And you playfully were like, yeah, you know, I spoke two languages, English and like the language of business. And what I am hearing back, right, like in terms of those comments, like it's, it's very, um, you know, emotional based and not very logic based, where from a business perspective, and I, I was telling my wife, like, it's not even in, I, I feel like one of these like politicians, I'm like, well, you, you took that out of context. You didn't see the whole conversation, right? <laughs> but the whole conversation was like, every business has a value chain. And understanding that there's probably like this much of the value chain that produces 80% of all of the outcomes. Correct. And if whatever doesn't fit into that 80% should be delegated and, you know, you provide an opportunity for somebody else, whether it's a salary position or something of that nature. So you can stay in the most valuable piece of the value chain. And if you can do that over an extended period of time, you'll get disproportional outcomes. Now, when I say that to you, as somebody who grew up in a house uh, with business, that makes total sense to you, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. And But why do you think that that's difficult for people to like acknowledge or accept in the realm of real estate? This is so it's difficult for me to answer that question because to me, it's so common sense. Yeah. Um, you know, know your value, know your worth, know your strengths. But the key to success is knowing your weaknesses. Like you just said, delegation. Mm -hmm. Without delegation, without it, without being honest with yourself, you will never be able to succeed. Um, it's the same thing as the concept of um, you're not everybody's person, mm -hmm. right? Not everybody's going to like you. Mm -hmm. So if you can, if you can uh, accept that statement, then you should very easily be able to accept the fact that. You're not going to be good at everything in your business. And there is always somebody out there that could help you do better if you delegate this out. There are people that are good at things for a reason. Hire yeah. them. <laughs> I mean, and it's just time wasted on trying to be the best at AI. Like, I'm not good with systems. My organization is terrible. I'm a now person. I'm a very, I don't know if you're familiar with disk assessments, but I'm very high D, high I. My S and C is shot. So I need to include people in my system, in my formation of my business that can organize and delegate that realm for me because that's not my strong suit. If I took time to organize and follow up and send emails and send thank you notes and do all of these things that I'm not naturally good at and force myself to, it's going to take twice as long. And it's going to take my time away from what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just writing things down as you're speaking. So the first thing I tell agents all the time, you know, coaching clients and stuff or people in the organization is if you don't have a system, you are the system. <laughs> so and what I tell people is like if your brain, if your body is the hardware, our brains are the software. And most agents, what the problem is, is that they're the only one who has access to their software. So nobody else can actually help them or do anything. And I believe, I'm curious, like what your thoughts are. I think part of the reason why this is, is because 65% of us grew up in families that live paycheck to paycheck. So what we heard are things like money doesn't grow on trees, trees. Right. eat all the food on your plate. plate, a penny saved is a penny earned, which is horseshit because oh, yeah. it's just a penny. Yeah, I've never right? I've heard that one, but yeah. And then the fourth one, though, and this is the one that I, I think is 
kind of the root cause of this is if you want to do something right, you have to do it your self. Yeah. And then that leads to this kind of mental map of, oh, like I have to be involved in everything. And you touched on something too, which is like, everybody needs to like me. And mm. I, I'm not saying that like the goal and objective is to have people to not like you. It's not the goal and objective. No, what I am aware is- yourself. Yeah. And Don't what I am aware of is that. as- as your audience expands, it becomes impossible to make everybody happy. What I tell people is like, look, if Jesus showed up right now, somebody wouldn't like his hair. Somebody wouldn't like his sandals. Somebody <laughs> definitely wouldn't like the color of his skin. You know what I mean? Like, that's just like, what's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's so funny. That's so true. Yeah. Somebody will always have something to say, period. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Yeah. So, so always. let's talk about this. So, so you're mentioning like systems and I believe that Part of it is first like thinking. I share with people one of the best things you can get from a trainer, coach, like just somebody who's a little bit further down the path. I don't even like those words. It's just access to the way that they think because the way that they think allows them to do what they do. So you have this like map of thinking. You understand the value chain as a productive agent. You shared with me like first calendar year, you did 10 million in, in uh, volume, which is awesome. So there's this recognition of like, oh, systems are important, right? If I don't have a system, I am the system. And I can only grow to the proportion that my systems will allow me to. I don't care how much rah-rah, how many Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. how many like podcasts you listen to, you will get stifled by your systems, period, end of story. You, you so, absolutely will plateau because there's only 24 hours in a day and you are only one individual. Exactly. So for you, Alexis, like what are you doing to get that together? Like be like, okay, how am I working on these systems? How am I working on the systems? It's really just, I mean, thankfully with just having a solid CRM and then having an assistant, having virtual assistants, having all these things set in place, having a transaction coordinator. Mm -hmm. Step one, my very first transaction before I even knew what I was doing, I immediately as a brand new agent, new to this industry, day one, first closing, I had a TC day one. And so many people were like, Oh my gosh, that was another whole cool thing. It was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you have a transaction coordinator. You have to understand how all the title and everything works. Why? <laughs> Is that my yeah. job? Do I own yeah. a title company? Am I mistaken here? What's my role? Yeah. Am I the negotiator? Am I the realtor? Am I here to help build wealth through real estate and help my clients get the keys to their dream home? Or am I here to worry about title paperwork? Yeah. I'm confused. You know, and I'm confused. So I, I what what pops into my head is like how many successful business people do we know that have zero employees? None. Oh. It like doesn't yeah. exist, right? So uh I think as agents um if we don't kind of embrace a business framework instead of just a sales framework, we are definitely limiting our capacity to help more people. And then you also mentioned like, what is my job? And I believe it's to be in the presence of prospects. That's what salespeople do, right? I prospect, lead, follow up, go on appointments, negotiate deals. I follow my plan. Mm -hmm. Everything else is like somebody else's job. Now, did you have that like right away because of your exposure, like, you know, with your dad and business, or did you have like somebody point that out to you? Like, Hey, no. I would hire a transaction coordinator. No, I just knew. I knew right away. As soon mm. as I found out that transaction coordination was a thing, I was like, yes, <laughs> that is something I'm starting today. I don't want to deal with it because that's mm -hmm. not what I need to be doing. I need to be out showing houses to the next client. Boom, right. boom, 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 boom. Become, as soon as you realize that, de that delegating your weaknesses, and again, like I said from the very beginning, organization and all those things, paperwork, it's not my thing. If I wasn't worried about the liability that came into executing contracts, I would even delegate that out. But the liability is mm -hmm. on me. It's my name on the contracts. So sure. I will never sign something on the dotted line that I did not fill out. Mm -hmm. Period. You know, unless it's yeah. you know, from mine, if I'm giving it to somebody. Um, so just make sure, you know, and of course everybody has their own opinion on that. But um but again, it's not where my time was best used. So right out of the gate, boom. Awesome. And then how much do you think, because we were talking to uh, this idea of focus and this idea of judgment, 
where judgment's actually what's best for the long term. And how much do you think in our industry, because the average agent does about four transactions all year long, if you go into any office, a traditional office, I, I used to own part of one before I sold it back and participated with EXP 19 months ago, uh, as of this taping, where there was 130 agents in the office, there was only nine people that made more than $100,000 a year. Uh, six of them were like right at a hundred and then there was like, you know, three, six, and then there was like me. So I guess the question is, is how much do you think the, that kind of, uh, low production as an industry, as a whole, the average agent makes $72,000 a year. And what I tell people is that the average, um, manager at Taco Bell in California makes 70. <laughs> so how much of that is because of not being clear on where to focus time? Say the, sorry, <laughs> ask that last part one more time. That's hilarious. Oh, yeah, she, she got caught up on the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, up on the Taco, Taco Bell person Bell. making 70 grand. So and you know, how here's much... the thing, if we ever fail, we're going to go work at Taco Bell. Exactly, bro. And, and get your 70 K. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. um, the question is, is how much of not being clear on where to focus your time leads to that outcome. All of it. Yeah. I mean, I would say if not a hundred percent, right. Obviously it can't be 85, 90% mm -hmm. of, I mean, because the rest of it, here's, here's something that I really like. You don't need to be the best. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the best looking. You don't have to be the strongest. You don't have to be the, the best negotiator. You need to be, honest with yourself about your strengths and your weaknesses mm -hmm. period. And you need to be resourceful. And why is that so hard though? Because, you know, being honest, like uh, Ray Dalio, who's one of the richest guys on the planet, uh, which is only one way to measure success, by the way, I think sure. the ultimate success is like when you're 70, if the people that you want to love you still do. Yeah. That's really that's, like being stuck. You know, some people at the end of the day, whoever's watching this and they don't want to be loved before in their 70, that's totally fine too. That's fine too. So, um, yeah. yeah, like you do you, but like, he's very believable, let's say in the world of like business, right? He started a, the largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater out of his garage. But what he says is that, um, you need an accurate assessment of reality in order to produce good outcome, which when I first heard that, Alexis, I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. But the more I've marinated on it, it's profoundly true is that I have to see things the way they actually are, not the way I would like them to be, not the way I think they are, but the way they actually are. And then and only then can I make decisions in accordance with that. And that'll get me closer to what I actually want. It'll increase the probability I'll produce outcomes that I want. Getting an accurate assessment of yourself, though. That's like tough. That because I'm aware that. Yeah, because our ego like is like it protects us, right? Like it's like, you know, not as makes us not as uh, I, I find it interesting when they do surveys, like how many people think that you're a good driver? It's like 80%. It's like, it's not statistically possible. Oh, I think I'm the best. But when I have people, you, you know, <laughs> or, or the dating apps are like hilarious to me where uh, it's like where, you know, n something like 65% of the po population of females represent as being naturally blonde when it's only like 11%. Oh. And the majority of men represent themselves on apps as being six foot or taller and making over $100,000 a year when only 12% of the population fits that criteria. Oh, that's hilarious too. So it's like, oh, we, like, it's difficult to get an accurate assessment and say to yourself like, hey, you know what? Like, this is probably not the thing that I'm best at. Or the accurate assessment could be my thinking is keeping me stuck. My unwillingness because I don't trust people, which is really at the root of not wanting to hire people. I don't trust somebody to do the job is actually inhibiting my ability to help more people. Would you agree Correct. with that? Yes. Um, so again, I think that the most important thing is to, it's so weird. I mean, we are our own worst critics, but you're right. We do. We do protect ourselves. We bandaid ourselves. We like, we have plastic wrap around ourselves when it comes to, the truth a lot of times. Um, us as entrepreneurs, I think that every day, you know, I'm never, I'm never satisfied personally. I'm never, like I always, even in my yoga classes in the morning, I'm like, I need to push myself. I want to do this. I need to be able to do this by tomorrow. You know, I'm constantly yeah. not happy and pleased. And that's, it's a double-edged sword really. 
um, yeah. um, climbing that ladder, never being satisfied, but it's, it's, it's tough. It's really tough to, to look from the inside at yourself. Yeah. And be like, how am I contributing to this? Because the, the natural tendency is to want to blame everybody else and be like, oh, well, buyers are this and buyers are that and sellers are this. So it's like, like, okay, well, how am I contributing to this? How am I, if I'm, if I'm producing, let's say an outcome that is not what I ultimately would like to produce. And in the business world, specifically in real estate, I would propose that that's units and volume. You know, people tell me, they're like, oh, I just love people. I'm like, that's disgusting. You haven't dealt with enough people. Oh my God, I just love houses. I'm like, bro, you know how many houses I've been in? I have to burn my suit because they have like a fucking cat farm. I hate the agent bios. I hate the agent. (laughs) Oh, I'm just passionate about helping my clients find their next home. No, you're not. (laughs) I know, stop it. You're lying. Yeah, you stop it. We're already off to a really bad start. (laughs) (laughs) I'd respect you way more if you just told me the truth. You know what I mean? So, yeah. (laughs) Just, and I don't know if it's because, and again, it's, I was, I did that. I was like, Oh, I'm just passionate about helping the next client. It was very quickly. I mean, I would say within months that I realized how, you know, unauthentic it is to be that. And people can sniff that out. Oh, very easily. Yeah. 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 My God, People will right away sniff that out and be like, well, this is kind of phony. And, and your success will, will, will falter because of that. Yeah. And I think, um, I want people to really hear us. Like, I'm not saying that like my intention isn't to give great service. My intention isn't to help. It is. I'm also aware that I can get whatever I want in life if I help enough people get what they want. So like my goal and objective is to solve other people's problems and to help them. At the same time, I get compensated for doing that. Like to try to pretend that that's not part of the motivation is like, like immature from a business perspective. Right. Oh, absolutely. Because we're all in, I mean, if, if we weren't all in this for money, we'd all be retired and, living as nomads off the grid somewhere. Yeah. And why does everybody who has like another profession that they went to college for end up like, you know, looking into getting into real estate? It's because whatever profession that they chose doesn't pay them appropriately for the time and energy that they're spending. I mean, that's the real truth. Why do people want to learn how to do subject two? Why do people like, I was just on Pace Morby's podcast. It's like, why do, why does he have 12,000 people in his, in his community? Because like, you know, they want to learn how to make money. That's what they want to do. They want to build wealth. Like, I, like that's right. And you right. can't learn that in school. You can't learn that in college, unfortunately. That's just you can't. Like, they don't just that. And that bringing it back to you said, you know, we were at the very beginning. We were touching base on some uh, some things that we grew up in average families where money doesn't grow on trees. All these things that we're taught. And I think that if you grow up in a lifestyle like that, again, it's just your parents putting this idea of an unhealthy relationship into your mind with money right out of the gate, you have to get rid of that. Or, you know, the one that I hear a lot is everybody who's wealthy is a jerk. A crook. Or Or an asshole. Yeah. I'll say it. I'll say it for you. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I speak speak French. I tell people all the time, like, yeah, we can do that. Okay, yeah, so So, do I. I'm the worst. So... Yeah. And, uh, I see that in comments. I see that in posts and stuff. And it's like, yeah. And, and it's like this sequence, like, it's like, first they laugh at you. Ha ha. Look at him with his glasses on in post. He's such an asshole, you know, right. then they'll call you crazy. Like, ah, it's like ridiculous. Right. Then they'll call you a crook. You must be stealing. Well, I think for, for a lot of people, it's either you're crazy or you're annoying. Get off my page. Yeah. And it's then, you know what they call you for, though, Alexis? You know what the fourth stage is? Hmm. They call you for advice. Oh, yeah, that's always a good one. Yeah, so so for some reason, and I don't know why, there's like this pervasive like cultural meme that anybody who has money is a bad person or must be doing something nefarious or like, you know. Uh, yeah, they're selling bad. drugs. Yeah. They're doing something like illegal. And it's like, look, dude, what I'm aware of is I believe, I personally believe, this is my belief. And I'm curious what you think. I believe that business is a spiritual like journey. It's not a physical one. And as I grow more, I can give more. And, and really what happens is, is people who have specialized knowledge, tools and leverage and good judgment, they actually provide opportunities for others. And the more that they provide opportunities for others, the bigger that that organization gets. Right now, I I think, go ahead. 
I was just going to say you have to because the universe, God, however you want to see it, um, it operates as a mirror. So if you walk through your life full of greed, focused on only money, not focused on taking care of people, like you said, like we'd all be lying if we said that as a result, we're in this industry or in any business industry, um, not for the money. We were lying. We're all in it for the money, but it needs to come from a graceful, caring place in order for that to grow because what you put out will always come back. And why do you think that people think not going to closings is not being graceful and not being nice? I just, I think it's just this, again, this old mentality of we need to show up, we need to do this, we need to go above and beyond and be there and hold your client's hands. But I just don't, it's not a great value of your time. No, and I don't think it's a, I don't think it's too much of a value for theirs. And what the way that no, I think it's about a, you know, it's almost, we almost get in the way when we're there. Yeah. It's like awkward. Like, what am I doing? Why am I even here? Yeah. Right. And um, what I like to kind of share is like this idea of like, a, again, back to that value chain, because people are looking to be led. Our job is to lead them. So when you go to the doctor's office, like, does the doctor greet you at the door? Correct. No. The lady or the guy up front does. And what's the first question they ask you? How are you going to pay for this shit? Is it cash? <laughs> or do you have your insurance card? Yeah. Then what they that do is they hand... How often I go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then what they do is they ask you... Uh, well, they, they actually hand you either like an iPad nowadays. that used to be a clipboard, but an iPad. And they're asking you all these questions. Where does it hurt? How long does it hurt? Do you have any medication? Da, da. What are they doing? Pre-qualifying. Then you hand it back and they're like, the doctor will be with you in a moment, which is a lie. You wait for 30 minutes. Then do you see the doctor? Of course not. You see the physician's assistant or the nurse practitioner. They grab the iPad. They're like, hey, nice to see you, Aaron. They bang on your knee. They weigh you. You pee in a cup. They sit you down in a room and they're like, hey, so this is what you're in. Tell me a little bit more about. They take notes and they're like, okay, great. Last like 10 minutes. The doctor will be in in a moment. That's also a lie. Right. Because 30 minutes later, the doctor blows in. And when the doctor comes in, he or she says, oh, hey, Alexis, I, I see that you're in for this, this, and this. Let me take a look. They go like this. That's a bill. You go, ah, that's a bill. They touch you here. That's a bill. They touch you in your abdomen. That's a bill. They write a script. That's a bill. And then they say, great. I want to see you back in a week. Uh, let me know if anything changes. They tap you on your head and they leave. They do that 20 times a day. Those 20 times of 10 minute intervals produce enough revenue to keep the lights on, pay for the rent, pay for all the staff and pay for all of the bookkeeping that they need to do. And there's a profit left over. So right. the idea for agents that they really need to understand is our business is the exact same way. Every business is the exact same way. Exactly. Every it's business. a value chain. Yes. Same. So every business is the same system, different dynamic. And that is very difficult for people to understand as well. It doesn't matter yeah. if you're flipping burgers, if you're a doctor. And now you're not saying either that that doctor isn't worth the money that is spent. Yeah. You pay. Yeah, like imagine work. being like, well, you know what? You didn't greet me at the door. So uh, I don't think you're <laughs> worth every penny. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Correct, which is so which is so important to understand too is he went through years of education and continues to educate himself so that he can provide a good service to you where his service should lie. In his area of core or her area of core competency. Like this is what I'm really good Correct. at. Like I'm not really adding value Correct. if I if I personally walk you to the front and say, Hey, when would you like to have your next appointment and go like this? Does that make me a better physician? Well, there's other people that are sick in other rooms waiting for them to be meet as well. That need my help. And precisely right. So if you think about it, like look, there's all gotcha. of these there are people, what I share with people is look, there are people in your marketplace right now that need your help. They want to buy and sell. Something happened, death, divorce, job relocation, moving to assisted living facilities. They have a pressing need or concern. Something's going on, right? They need your help. My job is to go find them. Correct. Is it, does it really make sense for me to sit in a room? And You know what was funny? Like, people are commenting and they're like, well, 
my closings take 30 minutes. Mine take 45 minutes. I'm like, okay, well, let's let's calculate the time you drove to the house. <laughs> yeah, to do the let's walk do through. the math. Then. Let's calculate the walkthrough. And let's calculate you driving to the title company, sitting there, blah, 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 and then driving back to wherever you came from. It's three hours, bro. I don't care how you slice it up. Like, that's what it is. Yeah. Min- yeah, minimum. And then God forbid something happens and you're sitting there and there's a hiccup. Well, what happens if there is a hiccup and I'm not there? We all have cell phones. And usually it's better because if there, and one of the people commented, which I really appreciated, and this is also accurate, is that if there is a hiccup and, and, and they're trying to get some money, who do you think they're going to, who you think they're going to ask? Who do you think they're going to be like, Hey, can you chip in? Or like that, 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 you know what I mean? Like that happens. Yeah. That happens as well. Like I told a story and this is how, like at the beginning of my career, and I'm curious what you think. Um, I had this experience where. I had this, I was 26 and I had this mindset. Like I don't, I don't go to closings. And at the time I was, I was in Gainesville, Florida. I just graduated from university of Florida and I was selling real estate and I was in this small little, like crusty, dusty, musty, like office, no windows, right. Just fucking calling and stuff. And I get a bang on the door and in, in, in Gainesville, I don't know if it's still the case, but the seller picks and pays for title. So the company had a title company there and the closing was happening like on site and I'm in my office. I'm not at the closing. Cause we, you know, it was, uh, I had the seller. I get a knock on the door frantic, like, and I'm like, yep, what's going on? I open the door. He's like, Hey man, there's a problem with the closing. I'm like, it's going to have to wait. Cause I'm prospecting. Go back to prospecting, get another knock on the door. Hey, it's really urgent. Like something's going on with the commission. Like they want you to come talk about it. I'm like, listen, I have an appointment and it's going to have to wait. Goes away. Exasperated, kind of like frustrated. He's like the managing broker. He comes back 30 minutes later, knocks on the door. He's like, hey, uh, it got resolved. The other agent shipped in some of their commission and it closed. I said, great. Do you remember what the actual issue was? I don't even know. No. But what I'm aware of is it, it exemplifies what we're talking about. Right. Right. Like, which is like, there was an issue. They wanted me to stop what I was doing and address it immediately. I knew it could be resolved without me. And if it was really that important, it can wait. Money solves almost all problems for the most part, as long as they're not legal problems. But like, if there's any like issues, you usually throw some money at it and it's fine. And, you know, the other agent couldn't deal with waiting. Okay. It closed. So and it we sounds on. like because of, because of the way it was resolved, it sounds as if the other agent maybe made a mistake on his Maybe. Own. But when I tell that, it seems so extreme to people, Alexis. Like, He's I feel like if I said that to you, they wanted to move at all. exactly. And I feel like if they I said that not. to you, you'd be like, okay, cool. But like, I feel like the majority of people are like, no, like that's terrible. You're doing a bad job. Like blah, 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 blah. But again, remember, it's not a job. We don't have jobs. This is the career path. You are a business owner. We mm-hmm. all are business owners. And it, I mean, we're not used car salesmen. We're not employed by anybody. Right. For the most part, unless you're on a team or something of the sorts, but um, we're independent contractors. So run your business as you see fit. And if you feel like you want to sit there and shake your client's hand and sing Kumbaya, that's totally fine. But it's just not a great value of your time. And I'm going to be honest, I don't care at what stage in the industry you are. I don't care if you're brand new. I don't care if you're seasoned. I don't care if you've been in it for a hundred years. It's just not a great value of your time. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, it's a tough, it's a tough pill to swallow. Um, I know. And it, really our job is to, of course, have the responsibility to walk through closing documents, which our clients, but that happens the day before, sometimes the morning the day before. On, yeah. Yeah. So do that. And if something so, comes up, as long as you're confident and everything aligns, is this a number that you agreed on? Does this all look right to you? Are you happy with this? Nah, 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 nah. Perfect. Okay. You have, that's it. Build a relationship too. One of the biggest parts is, Build a relationship with your transaction coordinator because they'll also do that with your client and make sure that they're happy with everything. That's their job. That's what you pay them for. Mm. And build a relationship with the title company you work with because a closer has to be present, right? Somebody's got to help sign the documents. In the state of Michigan, we don't have closing attorneys. Some people do. Uh, Some states do. We don't have that here. Um, But build a relationship with your title company where if you want to have a closing gift there, Coordinate it, drop it off at your office prior to, have goodie bags ready to go, whatever the case, or coordinate with your closing 
department and have them bring something or send it to them in the mail. Yeah. So, and, and, and you can call and follow up or maybe stop by like when you're in the area and say, Hey, you know, whatever. Absolutely. So, you should always maintain that relationship with your client. Yeah. So walk us through then like your process, because it sounds like you don't, you don't physically go. So like walk us through the <laughs> SOP, like the standard operating procedure, like what's the conversation prior to, how do you prep them for the fact that you're not going to be there? Cause I can already hear agents like, well, like, you know, what do you say? You know what I mean? Right. Um, so side note, the first time that I went to a closing, I remember I showed up and I'm like, I had my iPad, like I had, you know, and I get there and, <clears throat> and this is at a point in time where in this area, people weren't yet title companies weren't yet ready and understanding how EXP realty works. Yeah. So, you know, everything is, based, everything is electronic. So showing up and I'm like, Ooh, this is the closing. Like, congratulations to me. So I was sitting down, <laughs> sitting down first time home buyer. She's thrilled. And we get to the end and the closer and the, the closer looks at me and she says, well, I have a check ready for you. And I'm like, check. No, no, no. We don't do that. I, I don't, I don't need that. She goes, so you want me to just electronic? Say, yes, please. Okay. Well, I have this closing package and she's got this, you know, the whole thing. She goes, here you go. And I go, no, I don't want that. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? It's just unnecessary stuff, right? So that was the first indication. I was like, this isn't, what do I need to be here for? I'm not yeah. bringing anything home with me. Why am I here? So, um, but my, the conversation that I have with my clients, I really don't even have one. And this is going to be, this might sound very odd. The relationship and the, the, the way that I am with my clients already, they know that I'm going to do the job. I'm going to win money. For, you know, I'm going to build, help them build wealth. I'm a great negotiator. I'm going to stay in communication. But as soon as you are under contract, my transaction coordinator team will be reaching out to you. This is something that I have an entire roadmap that I sent all my clients. Um, like a, It's almost like a monopoly board, right? Step-by-step -step process. So you send it to them and it's a visual that they can see like, hey, here's the journey. Here's the process. Here's right. the value that I you know, bring to the process. And then here are the people right. that are going to help during this this kind of journey together. Correct. Because yeah. our consumer with the way that I run my business and, and more, I guess, uh, modern agents run their business. A lot of consumers aren't even fully understanding of it yet. There's a shift happening right now. I feel like we're in the middle of it where some people get it. Some don't. Um, so I just do that just to clear the air a little bit, especially for first time home buyers, whoever I'm working with. Um, and when it gets to the point where contracts accepted, I have the conversation, you know, like I said, transaction coordinator is going to be reaching out to you. Then we schedule closing 48 hours before closing. I always make sure that everything's good. Do you have any questions? Have you gotten your final documents? Let's review them over the phone together. If you feel necessary, if there's any red flags or anything you're not comfortable with, let me know night before or morning of, depending on when we get everything else scheduled and ready to go. I just say, hey, I'm available via phone. If you need anything at all, congratulations on your closing today. We'll touch base later this afternoon. And I always send them a congratulatory text. It's very simple, straight to the point. I don't overindulge in the fact that I'm not going to be there. Because as soon as you do that, psychologically, that's telling your clients that you as an agent feel as if you should be there, but you're not showing up. Yeah. So know your worth. Let them know already subconsciously that that's not your place. That's not where your time is most valued. And it's kind of a waste of time for everybody. Well, there's, I have a question, but then also like something that popped up while you were speaking is not only can you share that process and share with them, Hey, this is how it's going to go. And then you have that quick conversation with them. Like, Hey, congratulations. Just like without actually saying you're not going to be there, but like, it's, it's clear you're not, uh, you're, relationships with your partners being title and the transaction coordinator, they can also be reiterating, you know, like, Hey, this is like how this works. Right. Cause our transaction coordinator would do the same, you know, like, Hey, closing tomorrow. We've reviewed all the documents. Everything looks great. Um, you know, Aaron will give you a call after the closing just to make sure everything mm -hmm. went okay. And I would probably speak to them too before 
and, and reiterate that like, Hey, you know, I'll, I'll give you a call just to make sure everything's great and everything goes according to plan. I'm sure it will be. Do you have my cell phone? If anything comes up, well, yeah, like, okay. just pick up the phone and go, Hey guys, you ready for today? How excited mm-hmm. are you? You're actually getting the house that you love. Congratulations. I'm here. If you need anything, just give me a call. I'm a phone call away. I'll be in the area. Worst case. Let me yeah. know. And- and then I can hear all of the agents like kind of pushing back and being like, well, you know, that affects your relationships and you won't get referrals if you don't come to the close. Build like, the is that really- build the, if you build a solid enough, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but if you build a solid enough relationship before you get to the closing, you don't need to be at the closing. Your job isn't to work with your client and then at the very last minute go, here are all these gifts. Don't forget about me. Yeah, I find like in a way it's kind of disingenuous where it's like, Yes. At the closing, like, here are all these gifts because I hope you give me more photos. Pretty please. Pretty, pretty please. Yeah, let's take a photo now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Share it's it's very, like, self centered. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's really about me. It's not about, like, them. Why are you taking a picture with a soul sign? It's about you, bro. So you can get, like, you know, look at what I did and I sold a home and, like, that sort of thing. So you find, I- I'm curious, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this, but, like, it doesn't affect your ability to get repeat and referral business that you're not at no. closings, does it? Not at all. No, I only had one client and they were an elderly couple say, Oh, you're not, you're not going to be at the closing. Mm-hmm. And I've had to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, and you just explain to them the process, explain to them when you walk in the door, this is what you're going to be dealing with. My yeah. job is to go and, over the documents with you, blah, 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 blah. And then they realize, oh, well, you know, if you don't really need to be there to do anything, I get it. They get it. Yeah. Just have the conversation. And what I'm aware of is, is like, I think what's true is also an, an understanding that, you know, perhaps those individuals, you had that conversation and there's a good, there's a possibility they weren't really pumped about it. They come from a different generation. That was their expectation, right? At the same time, you're okay with that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to yes. have the conversation with you. And if you're still not like a million percent pumped about it, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Where I think when you don't generate, you have to tolerate. So the majority of agents aren't in a generation mode of like generating like business all the time. And if the average agent, you know, does a handful of transactions a year, that's across the country. It's like four or five. Then each one they're like exceptionally attached to. And they feel the need to like, you know, I, it's funny. I was, uh, I was again, giving a talk and everything I was saying was bothering this person in the crowd. Like I, I she's like, wait a minute, you don't go to closings. I'm like, nope. She's like, wait a minute, you have a transaction coordinator. And like, you know, somebody else like uh, talks to them when it's pending. I'm like, yep. You know, it's just like, it's just bothering her and bothering her and bothering. Her. So finally I was like, okay, fine. Will you stand up please? And she stood up. I'm like, what's your name? It's like Susie. And I'm like, okay. Clearly what I'm saying is bothering you. So what I would like to do is just ask you some questions and I want you to be clear. My intention in asking them is not to be a jerk. It's really not. It's really in hopes that perhaps it could be helpful or useful in some way. Are you open to having a candid conversation? She was like, yes. I said, tell me how many transactions you do. And she was like 30. And I'm like, you know what? That's great. In most offices, you're on panels. Like it's good business. How much does that earn you? And she was like about 300 grand. I said, that is fantastic. Okay. What if I, and I meant it sin- right. So <laughs> I meant it sincerely. I wasn't being a jerk. I meant it like I, cause I know in any office, she'd be one of the top producers. Right. So I was like, great. Good for you. Now I'm imagining that the majority of your businesses, past client centers of influence. And she was like, yeah, kind of like, how'd you know that? And I'm like, yeah, I'd also imagine that you're doing everything on those transactions. Like you mother the deals, you hover over them. And she was like, yeah. So I'm like, I need you to understand. You may not like what I'm saying to you. And it's clear that you don't. The difference between me and you is at the end of selling 200 homes in a calendar year, I am perfectly okay with 20 people that may not be exactly pumped or happy because I know that's not the intention. I just know that as my audience expands, it's impossible to make everybody happy. And I'm also aware until you are okay with some people not liking you, you will never do more transactions than you're currently doing ever. And as long as that's okay with you, fine. But if you have aspirations for doing more, you can go to all the talks you want. You can listen to all the podcasts you want. If you don't outsource pieces of what you're doing, 
so you can focus on the highest valued activity. And if you're okay with some people not being pumped, again, that's not the intention. Just as your audience expands, that will happen. You won't do more deals. And the room was dead ass silent. And I was like, okay, you can sit down now. (laughs) (laughs) But that's the truth, no? Be clear in your role. And you won't also, you, you won't feel guilty about it. You shouldn't have to feel guilty. Yeah, like what I'm sensing from you is as you explain that to your clients, there is zero level of you thinking to yourself, oh my God, what are they going to say? I can't believe it. They're going to be mad. None. Nope. Nope. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's clear straight to the point. Hey, how's it going? I'm very, I'm very upbeat and very laid back when it comes to my clients too. And I'm, I'm lucky. I'm blessed. You know, my, my clients are nine times out of 10, very easy. So that that's a part of it too, but it's just, it's my delivery and your delivery. Like I said, is that will make or break you. Your delivery is so important when you're communicating with your clients. Um, as soon as you, like I said earlier too, and I'm going to reiterate this again, as soon as you overindulge, over explain, say too much, let them know you're not going to be there. And this is why that's going to subconsciously let your client know you feel as if you should be, but you're not going to be. And that's going to set a subconscious uh, negative feeling, very slight or large, depending on the client, about how they feel about you. If you're clear in your role and clear about what you're doing step by step, you won't feel as if you need to over explain and they won't feel the need for you to explain whatever it is, whatever reason why you're not going to be at the closing. It doesn't matter. They know that you're here to help them buy the house. You did it. You won. Your job is to negotiate. Your job is to win a deal for your client. You did that part. Title company's job, now they step in. Yeah. And would be a much more effective use of time. Let's say you want to celebrate. Well, let me give everybody uh, a nugget, okay? If you want to celebrate, call your client up and be like, hey, what we do for all of our... Well, first of all, congratulations. Super excited that you guys... uh, you know, purchase the home, excited to hear about all the memories you guys are going to create in the home as time progresses. And what we do for our clients, just as a, you know, something fun to do together as a team uh, and introduce your friends and family to your home, if you're open to it, we have like a housewarming party. I'll cater it myself. And, um, you know, you can invite all your friends and family over. Is that something you want to do? That's a great idea. And they're like, yeah, that would be great. And then you cater it and it costs you 500 bucks, whatever. And all their friends and family come over and they're like, oh my God, this home is so great. And then you know what they're going to say? Alexis is the one who helped me get it. So now not only are you celebrating, but you're, you're also prospecting. Like that's, that's a more effective use of time oh, and and you're building a relationship with whatever catering company you call or whatever local restaurant you're having catering the food and whatever you're cater- creating the content because you have a videographer in the room and then you can post it guys i'm trying to help you <laughs> we're trying to help you be more effective and efficient with your time yeah we're I mean, not saying that. here that like you know i think when people listen to us alexis they're like oh you guys are just like heartless capitalist you don't give a uh, shit about people you know what i mean the reason we're doing this is because we have hearts, because we want to help more people. Know your time, know your value, know where your value lies. And that's that's the biggest thing. And, and transaction coordinator, get a transaction coordinator, know where your value lies, know where your time is used most effectively. Um, there's a top producing agent that's in my local area, and we had this conversation a couple months ago. It's like, hey, you know, so how's it going? You're on the cover of, like, uh, of you know, real producer, all these things. I'm like, you're just absolutely kicking butt. How's it going? yeah, you know, but I'm dealing with this title company. And blah, blah, blah. It was this whole story. And I said, wait, 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 wait. Why are you putting in so much effort to something? I said, is your transaction coordinator not strong enough to step in and take the bat? Like what's going on? Right. He goes, no, I don't have a transaction coordinator. <laughs> what? He goes, oh yeah, no, I'm just constantly worried. You know, I, I, have to, I have to make sure that everything's going the way that it needs to be. That's their job. If you feel, <laughs> I've had too many issues pop up. I've had too many, you know, I've had a transaction for in the past and it just never worked out. And there was just always an issue. And, you know, I'd rather just, I'd rather just handle it myself. Get a better transaction coordinator or explain to your transaction coordinator your process. And yeah. say, this is and an pay them more if you need to. 
Correct. Right? Yeah. Pay them more. Get a better one. Find somebody else. If they're not doing the job, there are thousands of transaction coordinators. If you were to look someone up or or communicate with a local top producing agent or a team, get a recommendation for a transaction coordinator and interview these people. Ask other agents that have worked with them or that are working with them. Ask for references. Have these conversations. Know who you're getting involved in business with because if you don't, that will also make or break your business. Choose your, your network is your net worth. Choose your people wisely. You have to choose the right people that know what they're doing, execute. And of course, it is also your job to check their work. You 100%. hire them for service. You, it is your job to make sure that they are being efficient and they are doing it correctly. If you don't, yeah. and a situation pops up, that's your fault. Yeah. And the idea is, is like, uh, you know, it's one thing to take your hands off something, but it's another thing to take your eyes off something. So what I would have my transaction coordinator do, you know, we'd have anywhere from 15, 20 pennies at any given time. Once a week, she would send me like an Excel spreadsheet. The name of the client <laughs> has the inspections been done, appraisals been done and any notes, like is there loan commitment and any notes of like, you know, whatever's going on, like two, two sentences of notes, because mm -hmm. truthfully people would reach out to me and they'd be like, Hey, uh, I need to talk to you about this. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't really know what's going on. So I will reach out to our transaction court. Uh, like, uh, well, I'm in a meeting right now. I'm going to reach out to Donna because, you know, she's in frequent communication with everybody. And then one of us will get back to you. And she would be the one that gets back to them. Right. But that's my way of being able to still keep my eye on stuff. And what I wrote down when you were saying that is really what that agent has is a fear of loss. Yes. That's really what's underneath. It's like a scarcity where like, if I don't do this myself, it's everything's going to go to shit. And like, you know, the deal won't close. Uh, I'll get a terrible review. Nobody will do business with me and I'll end up broken alone by myself. I call it a helicopter realtor. <laughs> where you're like helicopter parenting, right? And I don't have kids, but similar concept where they're just like, they're hovering, they have control issues. And if we don't do this right, we don't raise our kids right. They're going to end up messed up. Well, guess what? When you're doing that, when you're focused on this and not on this, you know, the bigger picture of your clients, and you're worried about everything, things are going to fall apart because you're so focused on and in an area that your focus shouldn't be. Yeah. And then I you're wonder what you think about this. And I wonder what you think about this. What I wrote down was like, uh, perhaps underneath it too is like this feeling of a need to try to justify how much money you're making. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. Right. Where like underneath it is like, oh, I feel like I said, like, I, I feel like agents produce drama to try to justify how much money they're making. Like, oh my God, you won't believe what's happening. Oh my God, you won't believe what came up, but don't worry. I handled it. Like it's taken care of because I'm like a superhero, but you won't believe what happened. Yeah. It's like you're creating unnecessary drama or, or you're feeling obligated to do things that don't really add that much value because you're uncomfortable with how much you're making and you feel like you need to justify it. And it's almost so many agents out there. I feel like they wait for that opportune moment where they can put on that mental cape, right? Where they're like, yes, this is it. This is where I shine. This is where I make my clients really, really, really like me. Cause there's a situation yeah. and I'm going to tell them all about what the other side did. And I'm the hero. Right. Well, you know, I would have <laughs> like, you know, when you live property in high volume, obviously you're like talking to, you know, agents on a regular basis. And I'd have these conversations with agents sometimes. And I'd be like, Hey, uh, um, I could feel them trying to be a superhero. And I'm like, Hey, <laughs> I, I, just as a gentle reminder. And I mean this lovingly, neither me or you are buying this property. Our job is to put the deal together, not to keep it apart. So, yeah. you know, we have a couple options here and whatever you decide, I'll support you hundred percent. I am very well aware in this environment that if we don't come to a meeting of the minds, we will put it back on the market and we will get another offer. Right. And then just hush, breathe and listen. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, that's, it constantly happens to me too, where you pick up the phone and the agent's just a total jerk on the other end. And you're like, what is happening right now? Yeah. Why are we doing this? Is this, is this, is this but I think underneath is the superhero thing. It's like a need to try oh, to yeah. justify and I think it's the yeah. same reason as to why perhaps, because we just gave like this awesome example of how I can do something really cool, which is like a housewarming party, which they'll probably be okay that's with. Fantastic idea. And yeah. then that's me celebrating with them. I'm also prospecting at the same time because I'm going to meet all of their friends. I'm getting content from that piece of, inf like for, from, from that and engagement. Just do a drop by, cater it in, show up for 15 minutes and go, Hey guys, you know, I know you guys are having a Oh, and they're going to be so happy when you knock on that yeah, door. Oh, you're, don't be the first to arrive. 
Wait till like, about halfway through when everyone's had a couple of drinks and then show up and go ding, 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 and then bring a plant. Just be like, hey, I just want to stop by. I didn't want to intrude. I was in the area. I just want to say congratulations. And if you guys need anything in the future, please give me a call. It's yeah, that or easy. Wait, it's that easy. Or like a clo- like you can do during the process procedurally is, uh, you know, there's different companies that do this. If you don't want to try to put it together yourself, one is Client Giant, where you can like before closing – you can send them moving boxes. And then before closing, you can send them, uh, you're like, look, you know, buying a home is stressful. So here's two Amazon gift cards and some popcorn, like have a movie night on us, right? So you can do things as it progresses. And then when it comes time to the closing, they do the closing. I don't have to be there for three hours and spend all this time, but I could either do the idea that we just said, which is like do the housewarming thing. uh, Or when you know they're moving in, just show up with food. Be like, look, I know moving's like a pain. Oh yeah. I'm sure you don't want to cook. Here's dinner. Congrats. You Here's know, like that's on. easy, yeah. bro. Like easy peasy. Yeah. And then you want to get a picture then get a fucking picture then. And then you're out in like 30 minutes. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's much See, more. That's, what I, that's my, that's actually what I do with my clients. Cause I show up, you know, I, I typically, cause I don't go to closings. Um, I show up with a closing gift, you know, whatever it is that I, my most recent one, um, they had a baby on the way and a, a three-year-old. So I showed up with a little grill set, like a playhouse grill set, um, the day that they were moving in. And I said, Hey guys, I just want to stop by. I know you guys are moving in and you know, but I wanted to bring this for you guys. And so I didn't, I didn't get them particularly closing gift, but I got it for their son. And I was there and I helped them unbox and I stayed there for 10, 15 minutes and we chatted and you know, we were talking about the house and everything. And I was like, see you later. And they still stay in contact with me with this day and send me photos of their new baby. And it's just, it's building that relationship, be a human being. Um, and I feel as if when we're the type of person that goes to everything, we become more transactional in my mind. Agreed. Where we're more of like a machine. Like we're, we're this, we're this robot that's going through the motions and the steps. And because you know that you really shouldn't be there, they're picking up on that. It's awkward. It's this weird transition into the next step. And then the closing and just sold sign. It's just so salesy to me. And that's not our job. Houses sell themselves. Our job is to build relationships and take care of our people. Yeah, that's awesome. So listen, I've enjoyed this conversation uh, immensely. So if people want to kind of reach out to you, ask questions about your process, uh, maybe you can send them a copy of your SOP, like whatever, where can they find you? Um, Instagram is the best place. It's at the Alexis Carrera, first and last name. Um, That's the easiest way to find me. Perfect. Well, again, I appreciate, look forward to seeing you at EXP events. And uh, if you guys like this episode, be sure to watch the next one. Maureen, you believe that in the next, I don't know, three to five years, there's actually going to be no physical humans doing transaction coordination. 